Hi, man, Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Last week, I was in contact with a lady at Elegoo, and she said, would I like to try one of their kits? And of course, I said, naturally, yes, because I can never resist a, uh, a thing to play with, an electronic kit at that. So uh, it arrived in a nice box from uh, Amazon, wrapped nicely, and this is pretty much what was inside that box. So it's a big bubble wrapped bag, and you can say, if the seal on the bubble bag is damaged or peeled off, please reject and do not sign the package, booble, booble bag. Um, and I'm guessing that's because this would just be shipped straight out like this. I'm going to have to zoom out a bit, aren't I, just so you get a bit more. Um, I, I don't know if that's the way I'd want to ship it, but... Uh, who am I to judge They ship how they want to ship it? I think inside the uh, double bagged Amazon case there's certainly not going to be any damage to this because it's a box within a box. How is that done? Look, that's interesting. I would have thought when you peel the top, the bubble wrap would have come with it, but it's like all over it. There we go. So I did have a quick look on the internet at this. It's a basically an Arduino board, um, although it's called yeah, I think a, an Arduino Uno, right? Uh, an Elego Uno, and I think it's their R3, which I think is the equivalent. And they've uh, put it inside this nice case with a selection of parts that basically is all you need to get going with an Arduino and look at that that is phenomenal so let's just start with the lid real quick because that's like the box of chocolates you know the one that you'd get you know some milk tray at Christmas or something and you're going hmm oh sound sensor module I'll have one of them gran would you like a passive buzzer oh yes dad some LEDs please son crunch 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 um, a really nice selection there and I'm it's not a one-to-one -one, by the way, you don't have this many holes, uh, slots in your box to put everything. It's, uh, some of them are bundled together clearly, but let's see what you get. So you get this nice thank you from elligoo.com. Now I'll just zoom in on that because you're going to want to see that, just see how it's spelled, right? So you elligoo. So I guess it stands for electric goo or electronic goo, right? Like the glue to glue it all together. But there's a nice little thank you. And I believe they've got a uh, Twitter account and stuff if you need help and things like that. So I'll put that aside. And apparently there's some projects already done on this. So this CD contains all you need. Look, it says PDF, code, and library. So it's pretty much drivers for everything, which that's gonna save you an awful lot of time. I'm wondering if I've got time to build something in this video, but I suspect not because we've got a lot to get through. So I'm going to pull up my non-existent sleeves and let's just get cracking. So this is one of those power supply uh, modules for breadboard. And is there a bit of breadboard? Somewhere, somewhere, searching. There is, and it's boxed. Woohoo! My gosh, it's like you've got to dig down to that. We'll get to that later, but yeah, that's the power supply for the breadboard. It takes a look up to 12 volts in, and it's got two onboard regulators giving you a 5 volts and a 3V3 regulated um, output. And you can see that's on the pins there that clip straight into your breadboard power rails, and you're good to go. So those are actually pretty handy. I've got quite a lot of them, and sometimes I abuse these and use these in other projects, so they are darn useful. And then digging a little bit further in the same slot. Oh my word, is that what I think it is? Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna open these as I go along. There's no point keeping these in the packs, is there? I've gotta, I've gotta make something out of this at some point. Right, so we have VCC ground, DIN, CS, chip select, and clock, DIN, D-I-N, data in chip select. I wonder what bus that is. But that's a Max 7219, apparently. A Max 712, 7219.matrix module. So that's interesting if that's an addressable module. That's quite fun, isn't it? You could put some more sorts of pictures and stuff on that. Again, I suspect there's drivers for that, if it's included. Power supply, we don't need to open that. You know what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Power supply, we know what one of those looks like. We won't bother going into that. 
So what have we got here then? A uh, some sort of sound module. I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to the card actually. So this is a sound sensor module. I think I had a kit which had something similar. It was more or less to make this. It was like a make your own one. Never really worked. This one looks better. It's got an IC on it, and I guess that adjusts the level, and then that'll trigger. Um, D O G plus A O. Hmm. Don't know what that is. And you've got LED one and LED LED two. Is it a normally open and a normally closed on that? Perhaps so. That's interesting. So you can have a, a positive switch or a negative switch on there. Chuck that in the slot. Oh, it is like Christmas Day. This would be a great present, by the way. If you remember those um, old old school electronic kits where you used to have. Uh, everything of all the wires and the little jumper leads. This is the modern equivalent and it's so high-tech in comparison, isn't it? I'm a little bit worried now. I'm unwrapping these and I'm going to be shoving these back in. This thing has a battery. I'm wondering if it's going to short something out, but I'll... I think it'll oh, be okay. I'll put it in carefully. And this looks like a real-time clock module. Indeed it is, because it's a DS1307 module. <laughs> what my brain is at today. And you can see it's using uh, SDA, SCL, S SQW. What's SQW? It looks like a spy bus device to me, but I could be wrong. And then there's your little lithium battery uh, to keep the uh, retain the time in the clock. That's so useful. For I'll give you an example. I want to make a real time clock for my Atari ST, maybe as a kit for other people, and uh, I want to choose the IC. Instantly, I'm going to test it with this, aren't I? And if this works, that's my IC. So this is a really good kit for people who want to develop things, right? Because you've got basically a grab bag of everything you might ever need. You know, look, you've got just a regular motor there. Remember the old school motors that we've had from day dot? Um, I think it's three to six volts, if I remember correctly from the spec. So you can drive that. You can probably uh, pulse width modulate it or adjust it on the potentiometer its speed. So some seven segments display. These are pretty much direct drive. Look at that. So you'll recognize, or you'll recognize, unnotice that they've got more or less similar numbers of pins on things like that. And that's because these are multiplex. So that's really good fun on a microcontroller. I've, I've used so many of these in the past and they're really fun to, to address because you want to do a sort of a minimum component build on this sort of four digit seven segment display with a small point of course and uh, you come up with all different ways of you know pulsing them and you don't want to um, necessarily use extra resistors you try to avoid using resistors you come up with maybe an algorithm so you don't get some brighter than others if you are um, driving them with different patterns on the screen there's all sorts of tricks to do there you have a 10 amp relay here and what's its voltage here it's a 5 volt relay so it's quite low voltage um, Interestingly enough, I remember a while back searching a long time for 3v3 volt relays. I'm pretty sure I found them. They were hard to find. Even 5 volts, to be honest, were rare enough. So there you go. That's quite handy because you can, again, directly operate that relay. Technically, you could do a mains project with it, 250 volts AC. But if you are tempted, okay, just be very careful with your tracking. You know, you don't want a mains arc across there and short something out and definitely could short you out and that's really to be avoided to be fair. Um, I don't know if many of you have been bitten before by the mains. Please comment down below on your experiences if you have. Share those because uh, they could be quite useful for the rest of us to avoid doing that in the future. Now I have come across this before. This is a PIR module and if you remember the Elector Ghostwriter kit that used a laser to write a, on a fluorescent luminescing um, screen, it had this so that when you came into the room it could actually just operate that laser. And and uh, now I see that they use a standard module, which is obviously this thing. Um, I can't remember the settings. I think one's like sensitivity and one's pulse time. And I don't know what these were for. It was if, if you had, perhaps it had to, to read a couple of times before it would trigger or something. But look at that. That's what they look like under the hood. I actually threw out a, uh, a module recently. I couldn't get working. I could see that device, but as far as I was aware, there was no way to do anything with it. In fact, looking at that, though, it's, got, it's a bit dirty. It looks like someone's already been heavily thumbing that, other than me. So, um, there you go. Have you noticed the weird thing with these, if spiders get on them? don't know why spiders activate these so readily. You think, uh, you think a spider's not got much thermal mass? 
So next one, ah, this is really cool. This is the DHT11 temperature and humidity module. Can't tell you what bus it's using. It's not, re it's not really indicated at all on the pins, but I guess it is a slight module. And you see it's got this little uh, can on there to stop you touching the uh, face of the sensor. But looking through the window, uh, I don't know if you can have a look as well. We can try. You can see in there, there's a gold colored thing. Mm, it does look like it's actually got decent stuff, you know, like that's a almost like a CCD-ish looking thing rather than just, you know, a bit of black epoxy. So there's some real sensey stuff in there. I think this can live with the PIR. I'm, I'm going to break the uh, break the layout of the kit now as I go along. Oh, very nice. Very nice indeed. You're going to like these. Not a lot, but you'll like them. So, first one, I'm going to put that there. First one is a um, rotatory switch, a rotatory switch. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really like calling it by the right things today, aren't I? You know, it's it basically you can rotate that. It's a rotary encoder, and then when you push that, it clicks. So that's your push button. So you've got a nice action there. And you can probably use that for a volume control, a digital, when I say volume control, digital, or you could just use it as a sort of general input as you're twitching it, you know, maybe you're driving a pulse switch modulator out and then you want to set the setting. Ding. So you could just so twist it. Yep, that's the setting. Now, I think if you've got uh, one of the, say, any cubic 3D printers, there's a rotary knob on it and I would be pretty darn sure it's this and not only that on the firmware on my one it's a bit glitchy like sometimes it skips over the thing I want so you could actually use this and program it up and uh, discover why they've done it so badly and then you can tell me why um, this is a nice simple one this is an infrared receiver I'm not even going to zoom in you know what they look like you've got them uh, on your TVs and they look exactly like the ones on the end of your TV remote control and that brings me on to this other part of the box which we'll go and again investigate in a bit more detail in a moment but yeah it clearly has a remote control there an infrared remote control very cool right I feel I've done this section now let's jump back down here again we've got some of the, the main event stuff I'm going to tear this open, rip it open, and this is the Eligu Arduino clone, I'd like to say. Um, I actually do have an Arduino here. Um, we can look at, let's have a look. This is a Mega, this is an Uno. Let's have a look to see how it compares to a regular Arduino Uno. And to be honest with you, one, it looks better. In terms of better made, there's a nicer PCB finish. Uh, yeah, I can zoom in a little bit more for you. Um, but it also looks as an, an entire like copy, like totally like a clone of it in every way. Um, it's the same Atmel chip, the same main processor, the same 16 megahertz clock, the same component. So it should be entirely compatible in every single way. You really don't get a closer closer board um, again it says open source electronics so I don't think they've nicked it do you know what I mean it's just their version of the same board I'm not trying to cast a dispersion on Elegu it's just this is what people do um, and that's cool I mean a lot of people uh, ask me because I do a lot of projects with my own boards that I make myself why don't I use Arduinos they've got their own limitations and I tend to try to do projects for production where using an Arduino may not be the most appropriate thing but in terms of the uh, learning pr platform, I think they're really good. You have a pretty good um, set of software and drivers that you can download and use for them. My gripe with them, I, ha I do have a fairly big gripe, and that's in debugging. I've never, <laughs> I've done some quite complicated projects, and then when they kind of stop working, when they when they stop working, they become impossible for me to debug. So uh, you can tell me where I'm going wrong on that one. I'll put that just aside here because we're going to go deeper then. Pack of resistors, uh, lots of, uh, it's 120 pieces apparently and it looks like there's several values. This is something I might keep in the bag. You can see you've got some 220 ohms, 330, 100, 5k, 1 meg, 10k, 100k, 10 ohms. So yeah, just standard values, useful, useful for pull ups, pull downs, that sort of thing. Wow, this is a great kit. I tell you what, I um, 
I've been trying to sort out some of my own like random electronics lying around. I'll tell you why. This is useful. I've got stuff like this all over the place, right? Where it's just a container full of packs of resistors um, that won't really go in a resistor book. Um, and a big box full of loose resistors. Because I kind of, I tried to switch to um, surface mount for that reason, but you still end up needing those through holes. So that's a pretty good selection for pull ups and pull downs. A nice little uh, matrix pad. Interestingly enough, I'm not sure how you would connect that. Is that anything we covered yet so far? No. We'll go through and see the rest of it, but hmm. I, I guess you could just use pin headers on that one, but there'll be an interfacing solution for that, I'm sure. Do, 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 do. Activate. Quite cute, isn't it? Make your own security system. Oh, this looks good, doesn't it? I've never seen one of these. Oh, hello. Hello, hang on, what, what's happening? I'm confused. Right, so this is clearly a prototyping hat, um, which is kind of cool. Oh, I love that. Is that on, I'm gonna show you what I love. Um, yeah, I didn't, I'd never noticed that before. <laughs> How have I not noticed that? The pins are actually written on the side. That's a neat feature. How have I not noticed that on previous Arduinos? Amazing. Mm, you have to look, I suppose. So if you have a design that you've made and you kind of want to make it a little bit more semi-permanent, you want to solder stuff in, that's the board for you. And no doubt you can get replacements for these because you could go through a few of these, especially if you're using this for college or something. Um, and this is really just a mini breadboard, but I'm not sure how it's wired. You know, it probably is wired straight across like that. So you'd put an IC here in the middle. Uh, don't happen, oh, or do I? I found a I found a box here on the shelf that suspiciously looks like it's full of ICs. And these are PIC microcontrollers. You, co I seem to collect these sorts of things, and I keep going. I'm going to use these one day, and I never do. But today's the day I use one just to show you what you do with it. So there's your little bit of breadboard and I want to do a breakout on this little IC and I'll just poke it through into those pins like that and then all these pins are connecting like that so even if I have to make multiple connections I've got four per pin basically before I have to start working out how I'm gonna probe them further that's cute though I think that's a very cute thing remind me to do something with these later and then you've got the bigger breadboard which is a monster well, monster in comparison. I mean, it's pretty standard. Um, it feels good quality. Yeah, it is a good quality one. It's actually got the power rails. You see there, they can actually unclip. They're, they've got these little uh, nubbins inside. So they slide in to clip in and clip out of each other. So that's handy. And it's heavy. That's a good sign, actually. Solderless breadboard. Very useful. And if you don't know uh, what solderless breadboard, it's really simple. So you take any of these modules we are playing with. So if you want to add a power supply, you just chuck that one on. So now you've got these power rails on the edge powered up. <laughs> Make sure it's nice and straight. So these are all powered up. And then you might just plug in your uh, screen thing, which might just go in like that. And then you'd have your Arduino, uh, your R, your Uno, um, and then you'd use something else. I'll just jump ahead and show you these types of wires to just interface between these pins and those pins, and then you've got your thing. You've got your gadge. You've got your gadge running. So that's how that works. Not too complicated, is it? Let me just pop that back in there. Oh, I'm, I'm quite hot today. It's uh, one of those hot days in the UK. We don't get them very often, but. When we do, they hit hard, and uh, we've been suffering, I can tell you. We have been suffering. So let's continue on now. So we've covered that now. The whole bottom row, we're really winning now. We're, we're in it to win it. Just seeing how this all fits. That all, you know, I just chucked it all back in the box, and it fit pretty nicely, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Impressed. So let's see what we've got here. We've got a nice little uh, fan blade. That'll go on our motor, we saw. And it's a safety fan, it's not going to hurt you. But maybe in this weather though, having that puffing at my face would have been quite good and I could have used a little variable resistor or something. Of which I see in this little mini case. That's cute. So we have a case within a case. And something I want to mention about this big case is, look, it's actually a proper moulded case. It's not got, you know, 
dividers that you can adjust, which they seem like a good idea that they're a pain because what happens with them, the dividers move and all of your components just swish about. Um, this one does look like one of those ones with movable dividers and the components have swished about a bit, but I'm gonna forgive it because it's just in transit. So let's see, we've got a nice selection of LEDs. We've got some diodes in there. Another LED that's obviously escaped. Ah, hang on. It hasn't escaped. It's got three legs. That's a, th uh, well, four legs. That's a, I was gonna say at least a three color LED, but maybe it's got more. Wow, look at the length of the legs. You see, you've got your cathode, your anode one, anode two, anode three. I don't know how that works. You've got your light dependent resistors. In fact, let's get our tweezers out so we can get those out. So you've got your light, your LDRs, that's what we call those. Uh, some electrolytic capacitors. Um, these might be white LEDs or they might be infrared. I know that there's going to be a selection here of infrared LEDs. Um, I've never seen them with a white dome, to be fair, so I don't know. Take it with a pinch of salt, what I'm saying on here. Uh, I think these are temperature. Oh, there's just different things here. So that you've got a selection, there's transistors, and I think there is definitely a temperature uh, IC in there. I have seen that analog temperature IC. Um, the, among all this, by the way, there is a tilt ball switch. Yeah, here it is. Look. You can hear it. Did you hear that rattling? That's actually a tilt switch. That could be cool for some sort of novel joystick. That looks like a thermistor right there for, te again, detecting uh, temperature. That's definitely a thermistor. And then you've got two buzzers. One's a passive and one's an active, so they're different. You know, some some uh, passive ones you have to drive to make like a, an interesting sound. It's like a speaker, and one just goes nee, And then you've got a couple of ICs sitting right there. Again, not sure what they are. A bit of, um, see a 74HC595 and an L293D. I don't know what they are. Just they inverters, hex buffers, something or another like that. A few tack switches and some ceramic caps and two 10k potentiometers so wow if you just need to get going you want to get going in electronics i mean there's um it's quite a frequent conversation on my discord about electronics and getting into it and soldering irons and stuff um that's very good you know get into that but actually if you want to learn more fundamentals just start here i can help you a lot more out on microcontroller electronics i'm more on the digital than the analog um but this is pretty groovy. Here's a Wi-Fi module. Um, let me check something here with this. I did notice the, the module there because it does look like um, a module that I've played with before because you do get different tags. Yeah, I remember I bought some of these additional tags for something I was working on. You see these sort of tags? Um, there's different standards. So if you do want to play the uh, RF module, you see the tag that it comes with and you see the card with the RFID uh, card in there. Uh, make sure you get the right kind because there's two standards. I think they're based on different wavelengths, so it's basically a different length of antenna in them and they're not uh, compatible with them. And I think this is the one I used on my Mega Drive Mini. So if you look at my Mega Drive Mini video, you can see me using one of these in anger and I interface that to a Raspberry Pi. So if you want to see one of those interface to a Raspberry Pi, head over to that video. Um, you'll find it if you type in back or at back office show or back office show Mega Drive. It will come up in the search, I promise you. Let's have a look at this. This is a very sexy beast. And you're saying, what is it? It doesn't look very sexy to me. Well, Oh, come on, get out the back. We're waiting for you. Oh, so many pins. I was just about to lose my patience like George Costanza out of Seinfeld. Look at this thing. This is a stepper motor driver. So if you've ever worked with stepper motors, you'll know that they've got their own little idiosyncrasies and um, they can be a bit tricky to drive. You do, you kind of want them to do certain things and they've got their own behaviors. So this thing is a nice interface between your microcontroller and that. Um, in the past, I've tended to make my own using like TIP121 Darlington transistors, but it takes up a lot of room on your PCB. And this is definitely the way to go. So if you look inside 3D printers, they're definitely not using big old transistors anymore. They've just gone down. Let's scale them down to something like this, and with good reason. 
what do we have here? It looks suspiciously like an XYZ module. So these things can be really useful for you, by the way. So I'll tell you why. This module is a module I have definitely bought. I've got some of these lying around. I bought them because they look neat, but I've got no way really of testing them out, and I'm a bit too lazy to interface them to you know, hardware to try them. This is the perfect way of trying them. This will sort of reinvigorate your love for all those MCUs and modules you bought. You can see here, it looks suspiciously like a spy uh, bus device and you've got definitely X and Y axes on it. So uh, I don't know if there's a Z axis on it, but you've got to play with it. But that's just cute. You know, it'd be nice if you could just do your own little spirit level, digital spirit level. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of projects actually while we're going through that you might want to do with this. Ultrasonic ranging, I mean, that is awesome. And let's have a look. Yes, it's handling a lot of the effort for you. So really, you've got ground, echo, trigger, and VCC. So is that pretty much good to go? I think that one's already doing a lot of the processing, if you've got that. think If you think about it, you get the trigger and the echo. It's handling all the uh, electronics to drive the ultrasonic transducers. And there's what speed crystal on it? Can't see, there's no number on it. But it's an HCSRO4 module if you want to look up its specs data sheet on the internet. So you can do all sorts of tricks with this. I don't know what the range is on it, that'd be interesting. HCSRO4, if you get the range, that'll determine the kind of project. I know there are some that have very close range within you know, a few centimeters and some that will just bounce off the other side of your house so you can measure how long your wall is. That would be a neat project. This one's nice and simple. This is a two axis potentiometer with switch. Something you can use on my mega joystick interface. Have a look, but guys, if you actually want to interface this to the PC to control some games, look on the back of his show.com front slash shop. Um, you can actually see that I have a joystick interface and this is exactly the kind of module that you can buy, acquire off the internet and plumb straight into that. You basically have two potentiometers, I don't know the value of them, it doesn't really matter for my board, um, and when you push down on there you see it's operating a tack switch, nice little tack switch, doo -doo -doo, just exactly like your Xbox. So that would be nice if you want to make your own Elite Dangerous controller, consider that one. 9 volt battery, does what it says on the tin, but it's quite nice they have their own heat shrink over wrap on it, you know, a bit of branding. I'm going to try holding up this way to the camera. Ooh, look at that. Elegoo 9 volt super heavy duty 6F22. That's cute. Very cute. Well done, guys. I like that. I'm going to get some back office show heat shrink. Uh, micro servo motors. Not the microist, but the next size up. Uh, I don't know how many grams. 9 grams. Very useful. I just threw. I literally threw out a whole pile of these uh, little hat things. But it doesn't matter because they all come with more. Um, micro servos and servos in general are just good fun. You can do a lot with them. They drive differently than a stepper. So a servo really just needs three things. There's only three wires, positive, negative, and a PWM pulse. So determining, uh, determined by the pulse that you send it, that's what affects its angle. So let's say you're giving it 10 pulses per second, it's going to be at 10 degrees. And 100 pulses per second, it goes to 100, something like that. It's way faster than that, by the way. Um, it's definitely not 10 pulses per second. But mm, 10 hertz sounds way too slow. So what's this guy? Ah, this looks like to me a, um, it's, it says water sensor clearly, but you can see how it works. It's a resistor effectively. And as the water goes up between these two sides, there is, these are two sides of the resistor. Your water's acting as the, the medium in between. Um, is it dielectric? Is that the right word? Probably not. Uh, as the water changes, the resistance will decrease. And then there is a little switch on there. And it does say power, so it probably has... It's doing something there. I can't quite see what that is, but it'd be interesting. Is there a part number? No, it just says Hoya. H-O-Y-A, Hoya, on that board. I suspect the data sheet for that will be on the CD, as promised. There's the remote control, pretty neat looking. Again, they've got their own branding on it. They, these guys are going to town. Um, hopefully it's got a battery. Yes, it's got the plastic tab. Good to go, really. Not much to say about that. You can program these any which way you want on your Arduino, so you can use that to control your projects. Or just use it as a controller, make, maybe make a little robot or something. Ah, oh, I'm so glad it's got one of these because I've got loads of these lying around again that I've been too lazy to interface with. These are screens. I don't know how this one's being driven. They, uh, let's have a look. Uh, 
Oh, this has actually just got data lines straight through, because some of them use serial, right? This one looks like you're just accessing it via sending it bytes, probably. This one is probably just pu pushing data straight into this bad boy. It does mean you've got a lot of pins to connect it to interface, and you're going to eat up a lot of I.O. on your Arduino, but who cares? You get a screen that you can drive. And it's really good, actually, that, you, that they're keeping it kind of low level, because it's important that you understand what bits and bytes and you know registers and all those good things are. Um, USB cable for the Arduino. We don't need to go too much into that. Um, these little, uh, I don't know what you call these. I buy so much of them, but I don't know what they're called. I'm, I'm going to call them jumper leads. They're really just to connect, interconnect everything to save you having to take your own wire and tin the ends and mess with it. So you can just poke these straight in. I guess you've seen these, but if you haven't, have a look. They're just nicely finished. They've got these little black things. So they won't short when they're stacked next to each other, and you can use them as a little handle to push them in and out. Um, sometimes I try to cut these to just solder them into my own projects, but the, the wire doesn't like it. Something, something about the wire, it doesn't like it. Ah, the reason we have the battery, look. They've made an external power supply for the Arduino. So I'm just going to get this standard Arduino just to show you. But look, it just pops right in there. And then your battery. So you could do your little remote module. That's pretty cute. And I guess you can always put a rechargeable 9-volt uh, battery if you want more, more use out of that. Again, these are the same sort of thing as I showed you earlier, but in a, a ribbon cable type format. And hello. Some of them have a uh, fixed end where they're not splaying out like that. These do splay out, give you a little bit more flexibility. But the idea of this is, you know, it's for example, if you're doing an interface to that screen where you've got a load of them in a row, you can just plug this straight into the uh, bus on the um, Arduino, the um, data lines, and you know, you could just it's easier to address, isn't it? Rather than the whole thing looking like a big rat's nest of cables. And there's your lovely jubbly little stepper motor. Wow, it's a cutie. It's a cutie. Stepper motors work in a really different way from uh, motors you're used to. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess on this one because it's been a while. Uh, you'd probably have, for example, a common here. And then you've got a number of coils, probably four coils. And they are wired in different ways. There's a lot of different styles on this. But instead of um, you literally control the output of the motor by changing the order and the sequence that you energize those coils. And that will uh, allow you to do quarter steps, half steps, eighth steps. It depends on the um, application. But you, it gives you this great holding holding force, this holding torque. That's why they're good in CNC machines. That's why when you turn on your... Um, 3D printer or your little CNC mill, as soon as it's energized, it all locks up, doesn't it? Like you can't move the XY gantry or anything anymore when it's like, yeah, I'm on, or I'm on, guys, because it's got that holding current because it's keeping those coils on. This thing, though, actually is a geared one, so you can tell because it's offset like that. I can give you another example that you might be familiar with if you've got plumbing controls and things in your house. These are synchros. These are something, you know, a very similar thing, but this is a more traditional AC motor because it's controlled by the mains, but you can see it's geared. And I can show you in this example, there's no way I can turn that knob and you probably definitely won't be able to turn that either. So that's nice because that means it has a lot of power it's generating a lot of power with quite small wires. It doesn't probably use a massive amount of current, but it can, once it turns something, because it's doing, maybe this is spinning around 10 times and that thing's spinning around once, it might be a 10 to 1 ratio, it can move something big. But also, it doesn't need that same holding current. So if you're using something under stress, like lifting the weight of a little robot arm or something, when you turn it off, at least the robot arm won't just flop down. It'll stay locked in place. So all in all, I think that's a lovely little kit. I am blown away by that. I th I wish I had something like this when I was a, uh, you know, maybe secondary school age when I was just interested in these sorts of things, but back in those days, it was more going to Maplin and getting a kit, but uh, there was I didn't have the understanding there and I I'm still scratching at the surface of understanding, believe you me. Um but this would have really helped me along just the fact that I could put the disk into the computer for example, fire it up, put my USB and just get some stuff going. I mean a lot of people stop at the stage of blinking LEDs but I think if you buy this kit you're going to just keep going with it because you've got an infinite amount of projects. I mean I'm just trying to think even of some we could do. You've got the ultrasonic um, detector. You could hook the ultrasonic detector 
up to a servo or the stepper, I'd probably do the servo because it's um, quicker. I did this once actually, I made something that did this. And uh, you can have it look around, z z z z z z z like a radar, or it can just do a little sweep of your room and do a little LIDAR, like a LIDAR, a radar type uh, mapping of your room and showing you where all the objects are. Um, that's definitely an interesting project. Also, you could use this in combination with the LED screen to show you the length of your room. You know, do some calculations like that where you hold it up, just like a surveying tool. Oh, it's it's kind of um, just think there's so much because if you're doing that, why don't you add the buzzer so you can hear it beeping like did 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 you know like a reversing sensor. So depending on the uh, distance involved, it has a different t uh, time space ratio, mark space ratio. You could choose the settings on it using the rotary encoder. Uh, I don't know if there's an application for the clock, but if you've got the rotary encoder and a nice menu going on, why don't you put a clock on it too and then have that and have it save the uh, every time you could save the setting and it would um, date stamp it. So it's as if you're like an estate agent or something and you went out on a survey and it would have all the times and dates when you went out when you were doing your little snapshots. Um, we're kind of building up this really awesome tool just from one one little discussion, you know. This thing, obviously, joystick and input. Really interesting UI for input. Very interesting, you know, if you've got 3D printing capabilities, you can make a nice box with nice security things. You've got the relay. Where do we see that? There was a relay in here. Uh, you know, relay operated lock, no brainer. That's actually a really easy one to do. You can just do that right away. You could also have an infrared thing so that you could put in the same code via infrared too. That would work nicely and maybe even a screen that says if you've got it set right and you're accessing it, who knows. If you've got the um, stepper motor set up, you could make your little infrared box. Maybe, I'm gonna say a cigar box, but you're, I think you're probably too young to know what a cigar box is, but any kind of wooden box. You could put this in a, a little wooden box with a lid and on this, you could make a little arm, a little lever that moves up and down, and that just really locks. You know, you could have that as a locking mechanism that just pulls a latch over or something. Um, make a really cool uh, box that you need to, you know, put a code in to operate. But if you're going to do that, I would do two other things. You've got an RFID thing as part of your little fancy security box. But what's cute in there? Do you remember there was a sensor that detect if you uh, move it? Um, that thing, the uh, what was it called? The ball switch, a little switch. So you could have it that this thing stays asleep, the box stays asleep until you pick it up, and then it could uh, alert you. Maybe you put the motor in and it b vibrates to tell you it's now waiting for a code. All sorts of stuff. My gosh. Toys, games, make your own desk fan to keep cool in this British summer. The world is your oyster, and uh, I'm sure keep watching the channel because we're going to be. Uh, covering more of this so yeah make sure you like share subscribe um, and jump on the discord because we're definitely going to be covering projects using this kit so if you want details of that kit just ping me or look in the description we'll get you those so that you can uh, jump on um, I don't know now if I'm gonna get out my 500 in one electronics kit anymore <laughs> Because for me, it's all about the microcontroller and those 501 electronics kits cover a lot of analog stuff that if you're a programmer, you're more into this side of things because you don't have to think too much about the electronics. Mm. Anyway, what do you think of this kit, guys? Is this something that will float your boat? Would you be very interested in getting something like this? Um, do you think that you do, if you do commercial prototyping and things, I, would that be useful to you in the industrial workplace? I kind of, my gut feeling says it's always nice to have one of these sitting on a shelf, but you tell me. Um, uh, and tell Eligu, just go uh, find them on Twitter or something and uh, let them know your opinion on this. Um, say I, th I sent you. <laughs> Andrew did a very bad job of uh, telling us about your product and he didn't even make something um, but he realized it was a 40 minute video so there we go so there you go everybody thank you so much for watching thanks to all my patrons they're going to come up right now and I'm going to see you again on the next episode of the back office show bye bye
and we shut the box dramatically. Du, 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 du. It's most complete.